This is the second part of uh, three November session, the bar of spoken word with our special guest Catrice Greer on the other video. And we are now going to do the open mic led by Catherine Ronan. Please lead us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Uh, brilliant, Catrice, and thank you so much. Um, and I would have two words for you, brave and inspirational. So thank you so much. And I would recommend anybody to look at the interview between Mose and Catrice because I've watched it twice, three times, and I'm going to watch it again. Anyway, on to the open mic. First up is Jeff Cottrell. Off you go, Jeff. All right. So uh, here's a poem that was published in this year's Great, Fred Great Weather for Meter anthology called uh, Paper Teller Diorama. And the poem is called How to Make Money in Poetry. So if you want to monetize your interest in poetry, you've got to listen carefully to this. How to Make Money in Poetry. I look in your eyes and I see the shadows of eternities. They call to me like a wild wolf in the desert, like a burning hunger that cries in the night, like an autumn breeze dancing gently on my soul's white grave, like a whispered secret in the dawn of the sunset, like a sweaty toothed cat ablaze in the midnight sun. I look in your eyes and my heart races like a bitter fawn in the manger. And all I want to feel is your soft and gentle touch as soft and gentle as the touch of Beauregard. Beauregard. Only the soft, cottony touch of Beauregard offers the complete satisfaction you want. No other bathroom tissue guarantees such high quality and fast savings. Soft as a kitten, gentle as a lamb, smooth as a newborn baby skin. America loves Beauregard toilet paper like no other. The preferred bathroom tissue of this year's national bobsled team. Go, biscuits! Beauregard toilet paper is available. <coughs> in eight or 16 rolls, or in the jumbo pack. Ask your local supermarket which size is right for your needs, Beauregard. Now back to the poem. We feel our breaths mingle in the air, and I can taste the sweet flavor of love in your destiny, like the sweat of a rhino yearning for better days, like the heart of a child beating for the memories of sour dolls, like the horns of a thief in the night shrieking for the ends of time, like the heat of a golden calf throbbing to the rhythm of the moon. We feel our breaths mingle in the air, and as a shuddering eye blinks in the Memphis sky, I feel myself crawl inside you with graceful symmetry, and I hold you close, treasuring your body and soul like a jewel, like precious jewelry from Nutty Neal's. Because Nutty Neal pays cash for your used jewelry. Cash, cash, cash. Gold rings, gold earrings, diamonds, silver, pearls, rhinestone, he'll give you cash. Why wait? Go now to your jewelry box. Bust open your safe deposit box. Bring all your jewels to Nutty Neal, and he'll give you the best deals in town. Even if it's broken or scrap, he'll buy it. With the deals he gives you, you'll have to wonder if he's nuts. Maybe he is. Call 905-555-NUTY right now, or drop by the shop at 663 Eglinton Avenue. This is not a front for anything sinister. Nutty Neal's Jewelry Emporium. Now back to the poem. I feel my love burst in a nutmeg explosion, kissing the night with a rainbow Nelson and a titter, like a filtered hallmark choking on the words of life, like a tricycle passenger with a nostril in heat, like a vampire shark and all that it represents to God, like an albatross that bought the wrong bus ticket while drunk, like a false witness to the deans of your ad could be right here. We're selling ad space in this poem and this slot could be yours. With our help, you can reach new markets for your product or service. Advertise with us and we will keep your business competitive and profitable. Great rates available for 30 second spots, one minute spots, even two minute spots. For a reasonable extra charge, we'll even grant you influence over the poem's content and themes. To learn more about how this poem can help your team maximize your revenue over the next fiscal year, call 1-800-555-POEM. Now back to the poem, to the deans of eternity. I surrender myself and pledge my love to you. This poem was brought to you by Bargain Jimmy's Chicken Nuggets. Bargain Jimmy's, serving you and your family prime chicken nugget goodness since 1953. That was called How to Make Money in Poetry. What can we say, Jeff? Just Brilliant as usual. Next up, we have Trace Burt. Thank you. Um, so this poem I wrote, a friend of mine, I was trying to explain to him, Teilhard de Chardin, how he was different from 
this idea of the ecstatic fantasy, like he saw himself and us as the ecstatic, developing hyper hyper personal and not individual. Anyway, that's the only way you can understand this poem, which is why I said that. <laughs> so the real poem, the real issue is, I worked with people with AIDS for like almost 14 years and in the late 80s, and a lot of COVID has uh, many of my friends who did that. It, the PTSD kind of rises to the top, even though we thought it was gone. So this is a poem sort of about that, both Teilhard and that. We can't outwit the cut of AIDS. Just behind my eyes or in the corner passing by, grief lurks. It didn't have to stay. Why not somehow another day? The chill of dread descends, though I say they are dead now over decades. I bow my head in a gesture to recall that through the wall of time they are alive after all. I strive to recall their faces while they lived through this time in their own spaces. Somehow I can't explain the memories that erupt and run a river through my mind now. They run a river through my head, a sorrow lurking in the marrow of my bones. What can expel this dread? It hides within this home in which I dwell. Lifting my eyes then, I see the heavens break in empathy. No, nothing is lost, and then surrounding me they stand. They witness to that love that shepherds once mistook for dread, yet instead it was empty, it was simply awe that had overtook them. Exposed in every way, our venerable saints awash each day, like standing on a railroad track, the surge so strong and no way back. Now through the potter's clay, they found a way to see and thrive and co-create their destiny. Their touch was fruit, their sounds alive in me. We knew as life took hold, we could become our very own person, making us one, you see. With an unyielding surrender of the ecstatic fantasy, the individual pretender gave way. Teilhard would say, it is the ecstatic person that connects us in communion with humankind. Believing yet, I feel a chill as COVID prods my memory still. The pain erupts in every face recalled with all the news. My muse urges me to represent at what expense they surrendered to the person. And penetrating that eternal door, they showed me how to become more to become one, it is not done. Thank you. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Next up, we have to congratulate Brian. Brian's up next, because we know he must go early, so you're on, Brian. Thank you very much, everyone. I have. See which piece I want to do. I'm going to do this new thing. Um, it's part of a group of little small micro poems where I attribute certain things to true love. And this one actually ended up having a little monologue with it. True love is knowing how to execute a hug over the phone. Close your eyes. Open your hands wide. Take a shallow breath, type of breath you take when you are aware the air is fresh, void of pollution, an unspoiled shoreline or a mountaintop. My arms are beginning to wrap around your back. The tips of the fingers on my left hand are touching the curve of your left shoulder. My right hand is against the flat of your back below your right shoulder. The beat of my heart quickens because you are you. I inhale through my nose, which makes a slight whistling sound. As I release my breath, my heartbeat slows a bit. You inhale through your mouth as your arms surround me like a romantic straitjacket. Your fingers grip my sides where my rib cage resides. As you let out a soft, exhalatory sigh, I feel your heartbeat through my chest. Its rhythm permeates the atmosphere. We have composed a symphonic duet for flute and harp that can only be heard with eyes closed and souls open. Thank you. Mm. 
brought us there, Brian. He brought us there. Well done. And uh, next up, we have Mish Maroney. This is a, a poem in progress, <clears throat> and it's based on a fragment um, of Spanish poetry, which goes, in order for sadness to sing, it is necessary to drink black water. Drink the black water. Open the floodgate. They will come when you drink the black water, seeping quietly on the tide of the black water through the open floodgate. Kindly ones, hell bent, remembrance oozing through duct and vessel and capillary, hair electric in the jetty night, to give suck on the heart of the matter. Drink, drink the black water. It will protect you from the black sails on the horizon, the squalls, Shudder and creak and groan of sea-tempered timber, roaring water and big-bellied shrouds straining against howl of wind and salt seamen spray. The halcyon bird has flown, kingfisher days of childhood, blown by storm. Oh, unfathomable waters, unfathomable waters, let me drink, let me drink. Let the grief rise, let the gorge rise, let me sing. The black waters rise, the black waters rise, grief rises, gorge rises, singing the black tide rises. Waters of midnight flood through orifice, stream through filament and vein, tidal, obedient to the pull of dead fire. Sea creatures slither, unnameable under skin of black sea foam. Those are pearls, frail meniscus skimming night's terrors. Those are pearls. Prepare to drown in the embrace of the many-headed hydra, sea-sucked, then flung, flung to the rattle of shingle with the old shoe, sea-worn, and the rags of the red dress on the foam-flecked shore, the bare bones of it stripped clean, crunch of jetsam underfoot, discarded photographs, a word unheard, inflections ignored, silts of old betrayals, ransacked, picked over by the relentless beachcomber, Memory, vomiting black water and sea salt, reefed, stranded, shipwrecked, battered with recrimination. Rack takes the temperature of the desolate sea breeze and the tide turns, singing. Well, that's not a WIP, that's W-O-W. -W. Wow. <laughs> Next up, we have Karen Scott. Hi, um, I'm going to apologize to to Brian because he's heard this probably twice. We've been in the same Zooms um, <laughs> the last couple of days. Uh, this is called Feast of the Dead. If I get a recipe from you, I will title it with your name and then the name of the dish, like Nini's mother's chicken and rice dish or cousin Pam's mock chow or Donna Geber Christos Freeway Pizza, an homage to the person who gave me the recipe and a way to bring them to mind each time I cook it. If I could have all my lost back for a feast, the house would be filled. Such smells, such taste, such love, like soul food without the drama. My husband would be at the stove frying huge pieces of, 40, of the 41 inch walleye caught with his own hands, or stirring a huge stock pot of creamy seafood chowder, his Rhode Island roots slightly out of place with all the Afrolatians and transplanted Ohioans around. My mother would be reminding me to take the greens through seven waters or chiding me for not making the crust of the blackberry and the peach cobblers from scratch. She and my granny Blanche would be shaping the rolls and I would be on hand when the first batch came out of the oven, steaming hot and slathered with butter. My granddaddy's sand tort pound cake would be scenting the air as it cooled next to my mother's white chocolate cake. My father would be on the porch churning homemade ice cream while getting to know his grandchildren that he never got to meet, the three of them born after his departure. He would be grinning from ear to ear that delighted smile he passed on to me. 
Many cultures leave food at grave sites for the departed. Many times all the legacy we have to pass on is just that, memories and recipes. May they both be sweet. Thank you. Woo, woo, woo. I want to go to all of your parties, Karen, all of them. <laughs> Stuff we have D, Alan. As I told somebody last night who said they wanted to come in my house, I said, um, I can cook, but I don't do that much cooking. And I also had an aunt who said, if Betty Crocker can do it, better let her. So <laughs> you might not get a feast. <laughs> I'll take my chances. Next up, DL. <laughs> Are you there, Dee? We come back to Dee. Ruth, you're up next. Okay, just something short and sweet, a little bit of um, just random stuff that came into my head. So it's called Stop, Go, Slow. Cheating, overeating, overthinking, drinking, over the limit, under the table, in a pickle, jars, walk, sleeping, swear, I'm not peeping, count to 10, breathing, skim stones, sinking, shimmering, glimmering, merman, fish hook, fish nets, thrown back in, dive, head first, brain freezing, run down, Running up that hill, over the hill, tumbling cheese wheel, bounce, here, there, gummy bear, bear skin, touch, fallen arches, archangel and heels, going, going, gone, rainbows and rear view mirrors, reflections of the way we used to be. D, are you back again, D? I think his connection yes, is back. Oh, great. Super. Off you go. Two new poems. The first one is called Surgical. It's a case of motorized metal burrowing into standing wood. The motion of the chainsaw the logger holds, sending tiny chips flying, letting sliced timber fall. No trees, no oxygen. Stand in permanently for tall, green, arboreal glory. Suburban dream road, paved cement, street lights and freshly built houses that could easily tumble in a nor'easter storm wind. No trees, no oxygen. Non-essential surgical procedure, like cutting working lungs from a prone, healthy body on an operating table. No trees, no oxygen. Picture-perfect old-school TV sitcom scene. Show out new cottages with astroturf lawns. Breathe in the plasticity. How many more new suburbs does this country really need? And that new poem was called Surgical for Diane Wilbon Parks and Catrice Greer. And the last poem based on actual events and written in Japanese style high bun form. This is called Hoganip. Santa Cruz suburban dead end street on East, Easter Sunday afternoon serves as a passageway to this green area, this mystery I've heard about from people living around here. An ugly brown wooden fence give, gives way its location, enter Poganip. Both of my deep brown eyes spot a wide pasture, nearly empty. One of a 
few guide posts have a map I scope out from top to bottom. There has to be mo to this place, this expanse of nothing. So my hike begins, right foot, left foot, repeat. The pasture of golden, sunny brown gives way to brilliant green and pleasant shade. Overlapping branches of trees form a ceiling, their trunks and nearby shrubs a tunnel. Loose leaves on the dirt flow, a carpet, make it for crunchy steps. I feel like I'm walking through a long corridor leading to a palace of some unknown god of the woodland. The mystery of Santa Cruz nature, hidden from city folks' view. And that last poem was called Poganip for Rebecca Lois Lucret. And I have one more picture to show y'all. Let me see if I could pull it up. This is what the green tunnel of Poganip look, might have looked like. It's a picture taken by some photographer. I randomly found it on the internet but this is what the green tunnel part of Poganip looked like for me as I was traveling through it on Easter Sunday, 2012. From this mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening. I dedicate this set to Catrice Greer. Thank you so much, D. I could listen to your voice all night. Uh, next up is our own Rosalind Blue. Thanks very much. Um, okay, uh, I've chosen a, a very serious piece. Uh, well, um, here we go, I'll just read it. <laughs> Spirals. That day, the arguments flew back and forth, again, round and round, spiraling deep into the night. There is never just one involved in conflict. As we finally lay in the bed, both naked, backs turned, each on the outer edge, I whispered, anyway, this is not love. That's when you cracked, jumped out of the bed, yanked me out by my arm, nude as I was, thrust me against the wall and battered me with your fist. My skin too bare to protect me, my arms too short to stop your thrashing, my eardrum too weak to break the thrust of your blow. I had only my eyes to seek yours and hold them with love as much as I could. The only thing I knew now might help love. As morning rose raw after two hours sleep, my head droning and pea warm air seeping from my left ear, I failed my driving test. And winter turned spring in the throes of spiraling, eroding emotions before I was strong enough, hurt enough to make the break finally. Now a trace of silver hair in my reflection and no more spirals, I still bless myself every day that I did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thanks that very was much. amazing. Thank very you. powerful piece, Sue. Very powerful piece. And some, a subject that needs to be written about, I think, as well. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. So next up, we have Margaret O'Regan. Um, some of you will know a poet called um, Tim Evans, and his, um, he has recently published a book of poetry called Bones of the Apocalypse. Um, he's a comrade, and he's, he lives in Wales. This is called If the Dead Can't Call for Justice by Tim Evans. I want to bear witness, first of all, to the crimes committed by those in power, the bankers, billionaires and all, the moneyed careerists and political honor cowards. Their system bred this awful plague and turned the beautiful planet toxic as they mixed disease with the making of food 
and burrowed through jungles in search of profit. Puffed up on premium grave co grade cocaine, whole fortunes hoovered up their nose. When the day of reckoning came, all they could do was smirk and pose. They cheated, swindled, bluffed and lied. Delayed, you turned, hid their heads in the sand. They averted their eyes while thousands died and drug profits flowed into corporate hands. Had you or I caused through criminal negligence or simple stupidity so many deaths while other governments had dealt with the pestilence with fewer resources but greater success, we would have been held to account for our sins of omission and commission, blood on our hands. No, no amount of justification or spin would have cleared us of guilt for those we had damned. To die struggling for breath in the ICU, the porters and nurses cast into hell, the teachers, tube workers, no time off in loop, the refugees locked in disease-ridden cells. A diseased system bred this system. To stop the disease, you get rid of the system. It's managed by murderers, conmen and thieves, a whole array of morbid symptoms. One day they'll be held to account for their crimes. And until that day, we'll never forget. If the dead can't get justice in these times, then it's up to us to collect the debt. So Tim Evans. Oh, thanks for sharing that, Margaret. Another powerful piece. Next up is Finn Hall. Uh, can, yeah, can you hear me? Because I can't hear myself because my headphones have gone. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll repeat you. <laughs> um, for those of you who know me, I tend to collaborate with lots of people all the bloody time. Too much for me and good half the time. But this one, <laughs> this one uh, is an unintentional collaboration. Uh, it's been written by about 50 to 60 people. It's not that long. Uh, and I posed the question on Facebook, poetry is, and this is the answers, poetry is unfolded wings for the singing heart where I am safe enough to be me, the soul laid bare, indecipherable to those who stare, what it is, the urgings of the soul, true history, my get out of jail free card, emotion in motion, a current that runs along every nerve. If you get it right, you can share it with others and light up a room, full stop. Emotion in motion. Closing at 4 p.m. today due to a staff shortage. Communication beyond language and grammar. A cathartic expression of emotion and soul. Perception photograph. Badly paid. A torch which shines into the most hidden corners of the heart. A tingling in the heart that you care the most. An Argentine tango upon the page. Sublime. Poetry is the refuge from the storms of life. She anchors me with pen to paper and a lifeboat saving us from the storms of existence. Essential. My heart, mind and soul woven into words. And poetry is where the lovers and friends, where the hell and heaven, where the writers pinned its own silhouette and emotional feelings. And poetry is where I put all my dreams. And poetry makes my dreams come true. Glorious, the canary in the coal mine venturing into the dark and returning to tell us if it's safe. Alchemy transmuting raw emotion, bearing of the soul. A feeling that becomes a compulsion in words, a flow. Also bearing the soul, soothing to the soul, a savior, a voice from the dark, a words from the heart. Getting a grouse against the world off your chest. An excursion down dark rivers of ink, the release that helps me breathe. A mystery, 
a voice emerging from the unknown, freedom of the mind, the heart on a page, an element that saved my life, food for the soul, whatever you want it to be. Dancing with words until they evoke a feeling, a moment, a lesson, or a smile, where anything can in a moment be everything, as long as a piece of string. The voice of resistance, therapy, expressive, evocative, elegant, and enchanting truth spoken from the heart. What it isn't, not a competition, and it's a way to avoid sending a risky text. The soundtrack of your soul, your inner self reaching out for a space otherwise uncharted, the dust of your intellect refusing to be swept away unheard. A lone voice shining through society's cacophonous darkness, the conductor between truth and the pen, and your heart bleeding its song in black ink onto something from deep down, filling airy nothing with something of renown. The thoughts of the multiverse as they flow through us in my succinct way to express and inform and ask much more. A convenient excuse for me not editing and poetry opens a portal to my soul, drums a beat in my heart until it's born on paper, waiting to be read. Most of the time, it doesn't have to rhyme. It's a helping balm that brings me calm, and poetry is something we search for. If thou shalt craft bust, then by all means let us have boom too. Nicht wahr? It is more than words. It's an explosion of thought, an expansion of vision and emotion and flight. And not just for school. It's writing words, expressing yourself, walking by the sea, explaining how you feel and telling everyone about it. There's my air to breathe and a magical tapestry of words woven into a key to your soul. Spoken. The diamonds in the language mine. A collaboration. Thank you all. <clears throat> you'll have to read the comments afterwards Finn, because you'll have to read the comments afterwards Finn because they were saying that you could read the phone book and they listened to you and Margaret said he always delivers those words with style and we couldn't agree with that disagree I mean <laughs> disagree with that read the phone book <laughs> we'll be there now Mags you're next are you ready Hi there, Catherine. I just, um, I didn't know which two, I have two short pieces if, if I get away with it, just keep an eye on me the time with. Um, just the one, the last slide we did was about um, things that disappear in the night, like evanescence was called. So it's like the Spanish bush. I thought about witness protection, people who, some of them are stuck for 20 years. So, um, Al Shazam. Come away in human child, waters that grow strange and wild, Slumber trout that won't hear unquiet whispers of stolen lives. World full of weeping, not fair to understand. Like a thieving snapshot or a cam girl scream shot, I think it vanishes like dawn dew in odd socks. To a Houdini a Copperfield, take what they have identity and numbers. Maybe will some will go to be reborn. But they're downgraded and dehumanized from life without consent, traumatized by unwitting experience. Annihilate their life, little life, alien friendship, secrecy and danger, stick a pin in the map. Come away in human child where the world went spoiled. Do not hear the creeping whispers of your stolen life. Our world is full of weeping, unfair to understand those poor people. So I just did a short piece for my sister Nora. It's a gentle little thing. My sister Nora, uh, I, I do this about once a year for her. Um, she, she talks like a gentle lyrical poem. And I write the poem directly after the phone calls. So this is called Solo. And I watched the time, Catherine. Um, it's for her way of managing. Solo. I got through the whole day today. Yes, I did. Wouldn't you be proud? didn't reach for the phone or text when I was alone. I just spoke to you alone, aloud. Check the garden drills, the herb tunnels, the bills. Look for a plumber on the golden pages. 
gaze at the same sun settling behind the hills, watch the geese in their chevron path phases. I did the patio too, and the, I sat in the warming, warming evening, sipped on the pineapple overtone notes of Australian wine beneath the awning. So I've been an excellent girl, I cope without your affirmation. You come the night con when I turn out the light. Well, that's a whole different equation. So it's for Nora. Love you, tribute to your sister, Meg. Mm. And Marissa, are you ready? Is Marissa there? Nurse is gone. Her daughter's appeared apparently. All oh, right. Okay. Well, she said she might. She said she might make it back. Um, right. Does anybody oh, else? Does anybody else want to go? Yeah. Mosey. Okay. Off you go, Mosey. Okay. A bigger splash. Seeing the swimming pool. Get undressed. Don a costume. I hold my nose and jump, eager to immerse myself in the turquoise sparkling, merge with its crystalline essence. Midway to the surface, I am spinned around, being returned to the cubicle, find myself fully clothed before stripping again to put on my swimsuit, then jump a second time, striving to dive seamlessly into the glistening deep. Damnation. The process repeats endlessly, over and over and over again, I turn mid-air before reaching the surface. Trapped in dryness, reverberation, thirsting to splash with abandon, float in fluidity, become one with the luminous, undreaming. I was so much older then, getting younger by the day, dying to connect with your essence, jump up not down to meet your soul, beyond the wavering, the fear of stirring up shame. Thank you, Rosie. <clears throat> yeah, I was in the water with you. Um, so we'll have one last call from Marissa and then that's the end of the open mic. Oh, Anton? Sorry, Anton, did I miss you? You're mute. Oh. There we are. There, I can hear you now. Great. Sorry, Anton, if I missed you. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'm trying to get this poem on the page. Right. Uh, it's called Midlands Bog. I went to school on the Bog of Allen, and um, I don't know where this poem came from. Uh, I was just, I suppose I was thinking about the summer that has passed as the hours, the, the clock went back and uh, this little poem emerged. And it's for Imelda Maguire and Finbar Loftus, who are fellow Kildarians from County Kildare. Midlands Bog. The sun is setting over the Midlands bog. We stand in what becomes the dead flat center of the world. In the summer cool, light as breath, a tide of bog cotton stirs. The to and fro is a quiet pulse catching light. The horizon enfolds this place. The sky, like the crimson wall of a womb, freighting the germ of thought. Juniper. Well, I know you said you didn't know where that came from, but I'm glad it came. Who's first? <laughs> so, uh, anybody, can I miss anybody else? Yeah. One last call from Marissa. That seems sweet, was it? 
Is that is this it? This is this is it. Okay, un unless Marissa uh, makes a, a sudden reappearance. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for Catrice, of course, and everyone who is here and who was here and who has responded and bared their soul in response to her uh, soul-searching, soul-touching poetry. And um, thank you, Cork Arts Office. The next guest is actually a member of our team, but that doesn't uh, stop us from inviting her. It's Lauren O'Donovan or Lauren Kavanagh, who is uh, actually a really great poet. And she will also be doing a flash fiction piece, an exercise, and maybe read some flash fiction and give some instructions of, on how to do flash fiction. So that is part of the session on the 1st of December. And you're all very welcome. It will, yeah probably be the last session on of the year unless we do something on Christmas Christmas Day or something like that I think that's a nice idea poetry anyone Christmas Day okay <laughs> <laughs> just tonight <laughs> I know it sounds crazy but it, it seems nice you know okay thank you very much have a lovely day lovely evening and see you again we hope and thank you, Catherine, for facilita facilitating the open mic. And thank you for everyone who read the open mic. Thank, uh, thank you. you so much, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Good afternoon. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Catrice.